Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to create a Python generator that you'll feed it a series of numbers and it's going to uh, take whatever the last three numbers in the sequence is and keep creating, uh, generating the uh, average of those uh, numbers. So it could be the last n numbers actually. So this is called a simple moving average. It's used to average uh, random data. So if you have raw data coming in like these dots that have some randomness to it, uh, you can average the last n samples and you get a smoother uh, uh, average, which is the red line. Uh, so now this uh, code you can get from the link in the video description. Uh, so I'll make it available. Now the way this works is we're going to, uh, we have to remember the last three numbers that we've been passed when, we, when we're going to be fed a sequence of numbers. So I'm going to use a DQ out of the collections module to do that and I'm going to use it as a Q. The DQ or a DEC as it's normally called allows you to input and output information from either end of a, of a, of a, of a linear structure. Uh, and you can refer to my data structures class, uh, video data structures class, uh, more about DQs and Qs. So here's what we're going to do. We're defining a function, and uh, it's called SMA for simple moving average underscore generator because it's a generator. It's input an iterator, which is an object in Python that you can make from anything that's a sequence. Uh, and it basically allows you to call next on it to get the next item. One thing about an iterator is you can feed it from another generator that could potentially be doing a uh, infinite series, for example every prime, and it would never stop. Uh, we're going to average the last n samples in, uh, as we go along. So what makes this a generator is you have a normal function, but inside the function you do a yield and some value. So that that returns uh, each uh, item in the uh, that's being generated one after the other. So this is usually done in a loop. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So first we have to uh, we're going to start getting uh, uh, items into it. So we're going to remember the last n items that we're averaging in history. So we're going to make a DQ here, and then for the range uh, of how many we're averaging, we're going to pull in the first n items from the list from the iterator and we're going to pin them to our history. So we, we're going to get the next item. This is how you get the next thing in an iterator. And we're going to pin it to history. And then we're going to uh, put the sum of those th items uh, into running sum. So this is our first thing we want to output is the average uh, from this sum. So while true, we yield the running sum divided by how many things we're averaging over. And so that's going to generate the uh, first item. Now this won't yield till the uh, after we've input three items. And then it's going to go in the history and remove the leftmost item. It's called a pop left. And we're going to subtract its value from the running sum. And then later we're going to get a new item and add its value to the running sum. Uh, so what do we uh, add to the new value? Well, we get the next thing in the iterator. We add it to the history, so now we have n items again, and then we uh, we add, uh, then we add that to the running sum. So now running sum has the last three n items summed up, and then we come back and loop again, and we yield the next value. Now when does this stop? Since we have an infinite loop, it stops when the iterator stops. Iterator stops by raising an exception, and so when you do next here, this will raise a, a, a basically a special exception that stops an iterator and so it will automatically be handled here. So now to test this, I have some tricky code, uh, but I wanted to test it with floats, so I make a range uh, from 1 to 10, and uh, which is an integer, and using list comprehension I float these, so they become floating point values. I mostly wanted to print this out, f uh, do this so I could print it out in a nice way, and we'll see how we're going to line up the input and output to show you what's going on. So here's where we actually use the, the information. So what when you call a generator, it creates a generator object. And so I want to automatically make all those into something I can output, so I convert it to a list. So the list will go and call this for every item uh, that the generator produces and make the, put them into a list. This creates an iterator out of this list, 
Uh, so that's what I pass to the generator. And I want to say I want to average every two items. So that calls the generator. It's going to create all the items. And so then I'm going to just print those out. So I print out the uh, input list and I print out the output list with some extra spaces in between. And you'll see that will line things up so we can see the input output. And then I do another list here where I just typed in a list and I average the last three items and we'll also see that on the output. So let's go ahead and run it. And you see here's the input from the uh, range from 1 to 10. And so here's the output. Once I get two items it generates one item out uh, which is average of 1 and 2. And the last one it puts out is average of 9 and 10 at the last two items. So you can see it works. Here we have a, a, a list that I manually put in to test it, and so and we're averaging the last three items. So after it gets three items, it outputs a one. Now I position this one under here in my formatting. It's just a list that has the first item would be uh, would be, would come out when you when it's processed the first three items. So you can see the next item is the average of the last three items. So one, one, and two you actually get 1.333. I'm just printing out the one decimal place and you can look at this closely but this is a, a technique you can use to format uh, numbers and map them back to an iterator uh, and then join them with commas in between. So this is formatting the output to one decimal place for a, a list of uh, basically uh, floating points. And so you can see both outputs. So you can play around with it and try different inputs and, out and see what the outputs are. Uh, but this uh, should show you some things you can try and use these ideas in writing your own code. Okay, look at the description of this video for links to the code and other resources. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep producing these. You'll see a, a icon in the bottom right of the video or any of my videos you can use to subscribe.